So this weird contraption is a Z80 based computer, would you believe it? It's a very minimal one, uh, in as much as it's only a Z80 and some circuitry to provide it with a clock pulse. But it's running a program. I'll explain just how that's doing that in a minute. Now this is going to be part of a bigger project to make an MSX compatible computer. Uh, the MSX was a series of computers in the 80s, I think. Um, there was a, a number of them made by various manufacturers with different features. Uh, but the core MSX1 standard included uh, a Z80 microprocessor running at 3.57 MHz, uh, a TMS uh, video chip, I think a 9918 video chip, and 32K of RAM and 32K of ROM. Well, clearly this doesn't have any memory or video chip yet. So it's um, very much at the early stages of development. But the intention will be to have a minimal MSX-based computer running on this breadboard. So I'll explain just how this works right now. The board is broadly split into two sections. So I've got this divider here. It'll probably explain things a little bit easier. There we go. So the first section is the clock circuitry. Um, normally this would be uh, clocked with a crystal. In fact the MSX I think was probably clocked off the TMS9918 video chip. Uh, that provides a 3.57 uh, MHz clock output for a Z80 as long as you feed it with a 10.7 something MHz clock signal for the video chip. But for the moment I've clocked it off a 555 timer partly because I have a couple of them lying around and no crystals uh, mostly because I can clock it at a really slow speed um, it's a fairly standard 555 timer circuit I'll provide links on how to wire up a 555 timer as a, an A-stable oscillator which is the official name for this circuit um, what the circuit does is provide a square wave at a certain frequency I'll measure it on my oscilloscope later um, on pin 3 which is this pin here and in order to visualize that I've wired up pin 3 here to this, this green LED where, with this current limiting resistor here in order to prevent the LED from being fried um, I've also added a potentiometer because normally the um, circuit is adjustable by resistor so uh, I can adjust the speed of the circuit by adjusting this 10k potentiometer here um, probably won't come across very well on the video because I think that the uh, update refresh rates for the camera uh, isn't quite in time with the uh, LED flashing it's not synchronized uh, but you get the gist. The second half is the Z80 itself. Uh, this is it here, a 40 pin chip. Um, the way this has been wired up, it's got a voltage. Uh, ah yes, there we go, this is the voltage line here. So I've got that going through a decoupling capacitor here, just to iron out any ripples in the voltage. I mean, it shouldn't be any because the whole board is currently being powered off a lab power supply outputting 5 volts connected to these terminals here. So it's getting 5 volts and there's a ground up here and we have a couple of lines on the Z80 just set high or low. So we have the interrupt and the non-maskable interrupt and the memory requests all being pulled high so attached to the 5 volt line here and we have the bus request I think it is let me just double check the bus request here is also being pulled high that's just basically to uh, tell the Z80 that there's nothing happening on those particular lines and we have a reset button wired in so we have this line here is the reset line which goes to this switch when the switch is open uh, what happens when the switch is open when the switch is open it goes to 5 volts through this resistor here when I close the switch it grounds 
and as soon as it grounds and goes to zero that will reset the ZAC so I can do that now by pressing the button there we go you can see the LEDs have changed the pattern there press the reset button it's off and on again so how is the ZAC actually running without any memory ah well there's a trick there these are the eight data lines that are normally attached to the RAM. So we've got four here and four here. Um, what I've done is uh, I've pulled them down to ground. So these will always appear as zeros in binary um, when the Z80 tries to ac access the memory. Well, it's not actually accessing memory. It's reading the data bus. Uh, because this is zero, zero is a special instruction uh, in the Z80 called NOP, no operation and it does nothing for exactly four clock cycles. So uh, when the Z80 restarts, it will start at address zero, and you can see the address uh, bus counting up here on the LEDs, I'll go into that in a minute, and it will start executing NOPs, and it will do that through the Z80 memory address space at 65,535 times, and I think it will wrap round to zero again. So in essence, all it will do is run zeros, run NOPs, Run a program of zeros uh, perpetually. Uh, the final bit are these eight LEDs here. I could have wired 16 or one for all of the 16 address lines, but I kind of ran out of space a bit on the breadboard. I'd, I'd wanted to get the first stage running on a single breadboard so that if anybody at home wanted to try this, um, they could do it immediately even if they had a small breadboard. So we have the first eight address lines here. So that's A0 to A7, and A7 is wired up to this LED, and A0 is wired up to the, that LED. Uh, obviously the rest are then wired up in between. So it's A6, A5, A4, A3, A2, A1, and A0. So that's telling us what memory location, at least the bottom byte of the memory location that the Z80 is currently running at. So if I press the reset button now, you can see it's counting in binary, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's the address that the Z80 is currently looking at. So it is actually running a program, albeit very slowly. Uh, I've yet to work out quite what the clock frequency of this is, but it's probably in the hertz range rather than the megahertz range. I can speed it up, so if I increment this potentiometer on the right here, you can see the LEDs start flashing a lot quicker. It illustrates perfectly how clock cycles work on the Z80. If you're into programming machine code, you'll understand that some instructions take X number of clock cycles. I said earlier that the NOP instruction takes exactly four clock cycles. So you can see here, this LED is pulsing every time a clock cycle occurs. And because NOP takes four clock cycles, this will flash four times every time this changes. So the one, two, three, four change, one, two, three, four change. But you can see there's a direct correlation here between the flashing of the clock and the increment in the LED. Um, another thing to note is you, you can see that A7 is actually flashing. Now at first I thought I'd actually put in a flashing LED or wired up the circuitry wrong, but that's actually correct. Um, I think that's something to do with uh, refreshing dynamic RAM, DRAM such as the 4116 on the Spectrum. Um, if they're not refreshed regularly, they tend to forget the contents. Static RAM is different. Static RAM, you can, as long as it's got power, it doesn't need to be refreshed in order to um, uh, preserve its contents. So you can see A0 to A6 don't do that. Uh, and the rest of this gubbins here is to do with the LEDs. So uh, the LEDs are being powered from the address lines directly and then each one's got a current limiting resistor which then goes down to ground so for the eight LEDs eight current limiting resistors so the next step is to actually make it do something useful and to that end I'm going to wire up a ROM I've got a 64k electrically erasable PROM which I'm going to uh, wire into the address and data lines and the memory request lines and get this actually running a program. I'll start off with just the ROM, I'm not going to bother wiring the RAM in.
as to why the ROM and the RAM you've got to then work out. Um, you've got to put some extra support circuitry in in order to select the correct chip depending on what address is being selected. But with a ROM installed I should be able to put a simple program in which doesn't rely upon RAM obviously so no stack calls or storing of data anywhere. So you'll have to just use registers to do something and hopefully display it on LEDs. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll be posting um, more details on how to build this on my blog. Uh, if you do like what I'm doing, then uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you very much for watching.